So we have used the fast inverse squares root algorithm in order to generate an initial approximation for the inverse square root of a number. But we can take that initial approximation and we can get a much better approximation by passing it through what is called the newton raphson algorithm. So the newton raphson algorithm allows us to generate the roots of a polynomial. So in this instance here we've got the polynomial which is y is equal to x squared minus 2. Now the roots are the points at which it crosses the x-axis. So for example the value for y would be 0, therefore we would have x squared minus 2 is equal to 0, x squared would equal plus or minus the root of 2. So this would give us the value here, this is plus root 2 and minus root 2. So we're able to get this value here, which is the actual value for, in this instance, the square root of 2. So we can see here that what we can do is we can take the value here of 2. So this is the initial value. We could call this value, say, ai. And then this height up here would be the f of ai. And we can draw a line from this point here. So this is the tangent line at that point. And we can see where the tangent line actually crosses the x-axis. So you can see here it crosses at the value 1.5. And then what we can do is we can take the tangent at this point 1.5. So let's do that now. So this tangent then comes down to the value of 1.5. So you can see here, by shifting this tangent down, we're getting closer and closer to the actual value here for the root. So we can do the same again. We can take this line here and we can shift it down to this point here. And again, we're going to get an even closer value. So this is the basis of the newton raphson method for generating the roots of polynomials. So let's have a little look at the mathematics. So this is the mathematics here. So I'll put this back to a value of 2. So we're going to start at this point here. So this is the point ai, f of ai. So we go along ai, which is 2, and we go f of ai. Now the equation of this line here, well the general equation of a line is given by y is equal to mx plus c. But the value of m is nothing other than the gradient. So it's the gradient of this line at the point 2, which is the point ai. So we could just write this as f derivative of ai. Now this is going to give us the equation of a line. But this line's just going to be centred at the origin. So in effect it would be this line here, but we would have it just centred at the origin. We don't want it centred at the origin, we want the line centred at this point. So this point here is going to be the point ai, f of ai. So what we can do in order to shift the line along the x-axis, we can set this as x minus ai. So if we have x minus ai, we'll shift it to the right until we get it at this point here but then we'll have a line that runs like this okay and it will cut through this point here but we don't want it to cut through this point here we want it to cut through the point up here so we're going to have to shift the whole thing up by a factor of f of ai so this here is nothing other than the equation of the tangent at this point here ai f of ai now we can rewrite this as y minus f of ai, and whenever we do the newton raphson method, we're going to set this value of y to a value of 0, because we're interested at the point where it actually cuts the, the graph here whenever y is equal to 0. So therefore we can rewrite it in this form here, and then we can transpose this equation for the value of x. So we've worked through here to transpose it. 
and this is the equation transposed. So in effect, this here is going to give us the newton raphson method. And we can rewrite it in terms of an algorithm, where the value of x is the next value, and the value here is the previous value. So we could say that a of i plus 1 is equal to a i minus f of a i upon f derived of, of a i. So this here is the newton raphson method for generating the roots of a polynomial. But of course, this is a, the general form. What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change this because we're interested in working out what the newton raphson method is for finding the inverse square root. So let's look at that next. So we have the general form for the newton raphson equation here. We've just changed it in terms of the letter y as opposed to the letter x. Now we want to generate this newton raphson method for the inverse square root. So the inverse square root is given by this here. y is equal to 1 upon the square root of x. So this can be transposed as y squared is equal to 1 upon x, or we could say x is equal to 1 upon y squared. Now, we're going to take the value of our x over to the other side, so we would have 1 upon y squared minus x would equal 0. But we're going to set the value of f of y to equal that value 0. So we're going to have our f of y is equal to this equation here. So what we can do is we've got the top line here, f of y, which is this here. We need the bottom line. So the bottom line is going to be the derivative of this. So we're going to have to differentiate this thing here with respect to y. So whenever we differentiate this side, this here, we're going to have minus 2 upon y cubed. And this value here is just a constant, so it just disappears. So we can rewrite this algorithm in this form here, we can take the f of yi, which is this here, and we can take the derivative, which is this here, okay? So just be careful, it's not rendered very well, but this is 1 upon yi squared minus x, min upon 2, minus 2 upon yi squared. Now we can redo this, and you can write it in this format here. So finally what we can do is we can take this equation and we can write it in this format. So this format here is the final newton raphson implementation of the 1 upon the square root of a number. And we can run through this algorithm twice in order to get a much better approximation. So let's put the values in and we can see how good our approximation actually is. So the inverse square root of 250 should give us this value here. Now we worked out the modified fast inverse square root algorithm and it gave us this value here and it was within 99.28% of the correct value. Now what we're going to do is take this value here and pass it into our newton raphson algorithm. So this is a newton raphson algorithm the value for our x is 250, and the first uh, guess at it we get from the modified fast inverse square root algorithm, which is this number here. So we put these into this algorithm. The first pass will give us this value, which is within 99.992%. And then we take the value here and we place it into the second pass. And in the second pass, we get this value here, which is within 99.99997%. So if we were to look at the actual decimal places, we can see that we're correct to around 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 decimal places. Now, whenever we look at a 32-bit floating point arithmetic as per the IEEE 754, it's only ever going to be accurate to within seven or eight significant figures. So this value here tells us that we have a really good approximation for the 
inverse square root of the value of 250. In the next video, we're going to code the fast inverse square root algorithm and our modified fast inverse square root algorithm in Python. And we can run it over, say for example, a thousand values and see how accurate they are. So that's all for this video. Thank you for listening. I'll get you on the next video. Goodbye.